Hey y'all, how y'all, how y'all doing? As of recently, we all been thrown right in the smack dab middle of a pandemic. Or is it a damn panic? This thing called the coronavirus. They should have called it the Budweiser virus if you ask me. America. And then as soon as this catastrophic event happened, everybody starts calling me. They're all like, hey, teach me hunting. And I'm like, oh, how's that college degree treating you? With your, your skinny jeans and your fancy shiny car. Ain't gonna do you no good now. Call me up. First thing you're making fun of me. Living in my double wide. Now, all of a sudden, I'm the king. Everybody's calling. Hey, feed me. Help me. I need food. Take me hunting. time I'm spending with you. Oh, wait, what? Can't feed yourself now. The world came to a collapse. I mean, I mean it, now it, it's plum crazy. All of y'all treat me now like I was some kind of preacher that forgave you for all your sins. And what's even crazier is people are like, Oh, we just bought a bunch of seeds and we're planting a garden. <laughs> and they're acting like... Tomorrow morning, they're just going to have a full carrot and a watermelon and squash and beans and corn, like a whole basket of cornucopia <laughs> overnight. Ain't that a knee slapper? <laughs> well, I tell you what, guys, I tell you what, this is what's going to happen. I'm going to reach all the way down in the depths of my heart and I'm going to learn you. I'm going to learn you the proper way when you harvest an animal, how to skin it and how to get all the meat off of it. And so you can feed your family. It's exciting, ain't it? But then what about your girl? Can't feed her, can you? Oh wait, what's that? You can't even feed your girl. Well, don't you worry. Guess who she's going to be calling? Yep, yours truly. She's going to have a full belly and me and her are going to be competing against each other in the Snuggle Olympics. So, she's all good. Cheers! Y'all come on now. Don't be scared. <laughs> it's going down. This way. Oh, real quick, before we get started, I'd like to give a quick little shout out to all my bow hunting sponsors. Starting with Bushman Bows. When you're ready to pull some string and fling with a real bow, get yourself a Bushman. Bushman Bows will put dinner on your table. Phew. I'd also like to thank ASAT. ASAT Camouflage. ASAT stands for All Season, All Terrain. You know what that means? That means you can hunt in all seasons, in all terrains. Now you see me. Now you don't. Ain't that amazing? And a special thanks goes out to VPA Broadheads. The best bow hunting broadheads in the business. And right here 
is my secret special sauce nose camo you just sit there and spray yourself down and it tricks their sniffer they think you're a tree and don't panic it's organic And if this hunting thing's for you, then give them boys a listen down there on that podcast at TradQuest. Traditional bow hunting podcast. Check them out. TradQuest. Did I say TradQuest? TradQuest. Yeah. Traditional bow hunters. Check them out. Great stuff. Hey, guys. Y'all smell that? You don't smell it. I know you do. Y'all, y'all smell that. Y'all know what that is? You know what you're smelling? That's me you're smelling. You're smelling awesomeness. Pure, unadulterated awesomeness. Because I'm a lean, mean hunt machine. Come on, y'all. Let's go get us a buck. Two. Now, would you look a here? Today is your lucky day. We got fresh tracks right here. And I just stepped in a hot, steamy pile of fresh doo-doo. They're everywhere. Look at there. Fresh tracks. I mean, I couldn't even be a minute behind them. They're around here somewhere. Look at that. That's as fresh as it gets. That is, that is one big old deer right there. Days are numbered. Oh my God. The biggest buck anybody ever seen is coming in hot. It's walking right to me. It's about 40 yards away. I'll be quiet now. Y'all see that? Time to take notes from a winner. I just shot the biggest buck I have ever seen. Ever. I smoke that thing. My heart is beating like a jackhammer. I mean, we got us a big buck down. I feel like just going crazy. I feel like blasting some Leonard Skinner or or some Lemmy from Motorhead. I mean, guys, it's time to celebrate. There's a huge buck down on the ground. Huge. I mean, I, I feel like ripping all my clothes off and running butt-ass naked through the police station and celebrating or, or the library or something. <laughs> Take notes, y'all. <laughs> I am a lean, mean, Hunting machine. <laughs> Come on, y'all. Let's go get our butt, too. Guys, you wouldn't believe it. There's blood everywhere. It looks like some crystal meth head got hold of a ketchup bottle and just went crazy with it.
Touch. That buck only went 20 yards or so. He went down faster than two lesbians in a track race. Down and lick it split. Just like that. And there he is. Oh my god. Look at the size of this thing, y'all. I mean, it don't make sense. It don't make sense that there's a buck this big. Are y'all gonna think I done shot a moose or something? I mean, <laughs> this thing could end the world famine problem. It's so big. We it ain't fit in the truck, that's for sure. Good God Almighty. I mean, shit fire and save the matches. This thing is massive, y'all. <laughs> Straight massive. Just a gigantic woolly mammoth of a buck. Look at this thing, y'all. Check them out. Oh my God. Would y'all look at the size of this monster buck? I know it's the biggest buck anybody ever seen. This buck alone is going to feed a whole army. It could even feed China. Everybody in China. Granddaddy, I know you're up there looking down on me. And you're in disbelief of the size of this monster buck. It has to be the biggest buck anyone ever seen. You seen, I seen, anybody. Probably the biggest buck in the whole galaxy. You taught me everything I know. I love you. Well, we got a monster buck on the ground, but now the real work begins. You know, it's crazy. Most people think you shoot a big old buck like I just did. Big old monster galactic buck. I'm probably going to need a forklift to get it out of here. And the crazy thing is, is a lot of people, if not most, think it just jumps in your freezer. You ain't got to do nothing. So now, the real work begins. And I'm about to show you some skills. I'm going to show you how to skin it and debone it. And you know what? Some of you, in time, you'll become a pro. You might even open up your own butcher shop. Remember now, it's always a good practice to study the anatomy of the animal that you're planning to hunt so you know where your shop placement goes. You also kind of want to look it over and uh, know how you're going to butcher it. Know like where all the, the parts are that you want to take home for the straps and the tenderloins and the rump roast and all of it, all of it. And then from there, it's infinite, you know. Some of you might even have your own cooking show where you know it. You can smoke it, you can jerky it, you can grill it, you can fry it, you can, like, I mean, everything you can do under the sun. So, some of you might be America's new top chef. You never know. Just one hunt and you're, you're sold. You're hooked for life. You just need to study up on the anatomy of the animal that you're hunting before you're out in the field so you can butcher it right. You bring her home with you. Whether it's a deer or a pig or an elk, so that when you're out in the field, you know what you're going to do. You know how you're going to butcher it so you can bring them home, feed your family, and sustain yourself. So, right here, along that, that's that back strap I was telling you about. That's my favorite, everybody's favorite. And hey, raise your hand if you love ribs. Everybody loves ribs. Along this little piggy, it's a belly, a pork belly. That's where bacon comes from. Everybody loves making bacon, too. And so, you got right here, 
you got the ham hocks, which is the same as the rump roast on a, on a big old buck like that one I got. The one I took down to a winner right here. Y'all seen it? I know you did. Also, super important now. Listen up, y'all. This is from a hunter's advice. A real hunter. A hunter like me hunting machine. A hunter that knows how to hunt. Best hunter right here. Y'all see him looking at him right here. See him right here. Oh, stick you. Look out. Now, also, as I was telling you, all that night. Careful now. As I said, as I was telling y'all, before you go out in the field, you need to know about your shot placement and where it's going to go on your animal for being ethical. Because you want to send it off with some love. And take your animal down ethically by not letting it suffer. We don't want that little animal to suffer now. We don't want it to sit there forever and ever. You know, it's not kind. It's not what you want to do if you're a, a real hunter. Like right here. Like me. Who you're looking at? Right here. Right here, you're looking at him. Yep. Yeah. And so there's a couple types of different shots you want to take now. Rifle hunters. A lot of times they'll take a headshot and I don't put them right down. So a lot of times you'll hear hunters talking and they'll be talking about a barn shot. And a barn shot is just a broad shot. So it's like the broad side of a barn with the animals facing right at you. So you're hitting a broad side of a barn. Imagine that. You got that whole side to shoot at and you're still going for that heart. But then you'll hear the term from hunters talking. I talk about it. I hear other hunters talking about it, and so they'll say quartering away. And so if they're quartering, they're angling. So here, your shot, watch out for that knife. It'll stick you. It'll come, and you'll get more vital organs to bring your animal down possibly faster. You're still aiming at that heart region. And then if they got a front shot, we call it a basket shot. Because you're heading right in the brisket, and that's a tough one. Not everyone does it, but, you know, some guys like me who know how to hunt, we get it done. And a lot of us will call the heart. You'll hear them talking about shooting them in the boiler room. And the boiler room is the heart region because it's all bubbling and percolating, giving life to me and you and my deers that we're hunting and all the piggies and the elk and everything else. Just like that kettle when you're making some good moonshine, you know? Choo. Some of that white lightning. We like sipping on our lightning. And then, like I said, that heart region on your animal, especially these deer, don't forget. That's actually the best part. So if you take a deer, like that buck I got, don't it? I'm gonna remind you every time. Cause that's the biggest buck anyone ever seen. You've seen, I've seen, anybody seen. That heart. is some good stuff is you just cut it and cube it and little things you just throw it in a skillet little oil in there and you just cook them on up right throw it on top of some spaghetti and whoo i tell you what you add a nice glass of some mad dog 2020 or some night train and you're eating fancy i'm talking like i mean y'all y'all gonna feel like y'all was italian like you just got on a plane and flew straight to italy Wee wee, for sure. All right, now, so we got us a big buck down. Now, now here's the deal. We can talk about this all day long. I could do it right there in front of you, right? But you really ain't going to learn until you get down and dirty. Now, a bunch of pansies, they like to put gloves on when they reach in. But you know what? <laughs> It's time to take off your your little pansy panties and put on your big boy jeans and get down and dirty. It's just part of the job. It's what you do. It's part of the hunting. You'll get it. So to get this job done, guys, you're going to need like a really, really, really good knife. I got this knife here. I think it cost me about $350. Oh, 
I hear you gasping for air. You know what? When your whole life revolves around hunting, and you, you, you live it, you breathe it, you eat it, you even piss it, everything's hunt. You know what I mean? You just invest in the best. And hunt, hunt, and hunt again. And speaking of which, y'all guys know what time it is? It's hunt o'clock. In about a half hour from now, it'll be hunt 30. And then it's going to roll back over and be hunt o'clock again. All day, every day. Hunt. We're hunting. We live it. We breathe it. We sleep it. We eat it. For breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Two. Hunting machine. I tell you. You know, you ever seen Crocodile Dundee? He's like, oh, that's not an all. That's an all. Well, he ain't got nothing on this one. That's an all right there. This thing, will, this thing will get the job done. I could dissect an elephant with this knife right here. So, but you ain't got to go all crazy and get you an expensive $350 knife like this one. There's lots of knives out there. I've seen people do it with the $5 knife, you know. I just love, I love my hunting things, you know. My bow, it's special to me. And my knife, it's special to me. So the first process So, as they say, there's more than one way to skin a cat. The same goes with starting to prepare your animal to get them prepped for deboning and getting the meat off her. So, you're going to start right here. Get you be real careful. Come around its private parts. And then we'll talk about this. You come down to the butt hole and you give it a big circle cut all the way around. You got to be careful because you're going to see the bladder. And then it's got the urethra. It's going to have a little tube. And urine can get all over everything. Get you a little cut. All of a sudden, a balloon will come out. That's the gut bag. And all of a sudden, the gut bag is going to just come out. And it's going to look kind of like a balloon. Just like one you got at the carnival. But then there's all the innards inside. And make sure that you don't poke a hole in that gut bag. Because if you do, it's going to smell like everybody at a football stadium. Busted ass. All at the same time. This right chair is going to open up for you. And you're going to see all. I mean it's going, it's going to be just like you went back to health class in school. I think, what was that, the sixth grade? You're going to see the heart and the lungs, and you're going to like, by golly, that's how I work. You we all got the same parts inside. So from here, a lot of people, this is called the brisket. It's easy to remember. You know why? Because it rhymes with brisket. And so, once you cut and saw that brisket open, you got two ways to disconnect from here down to here, known as the butt hole, all right? So most people will saw here, but what I do is I just get down and dirty and reach on in. You'll have like all this open up and it's gonna be like webs. And when you cut them webs, you work your way down to the spine and you just get to the spine. A lot of people will try and crack the spine in the back to get it to release, but not me. I'll just get up under there and cut and then pull everything out when the time comes. But what you want to do here is once you get here, you can either cut the esophagus or you can reach all the way up in there. Get your hands up in there and you can feel it and you just cut the throat. So, because you got to get everything to disconnect its inside. Then you can take your animal home with you. And so what a lot of people do, once you cut around right here, this is known as the butt hole, okay? Right here underneath their tail, you go in at an angle towards 
you're going to feel it the pelvis bone the hip bone whatever kind of bone it is and you're just going to go around the butt hole right you're just going to circle around the butt hole and the butt hole that's where you just you start cutting around it right you go in at this side and this side and you work your way around it and it disconnects all here and like I said you cut the throat and then everything comes out at once but once you do the butt hole everything will come out because we're all connected as we chew our food and digest it goes through the throat and works its way to the stomach and it comes out right here at the butt hole okay you know you gotta look at when you're carving around the butt hole it, it it's like coring an apple if you ever taken an apple and you take the top be careful you cut yourself with a knife like this and you, and you just go all the way around and you cut them all in and then I mean look at that just like that that's what you're looking for when you're when you're cutting around the butt hole to release all the innards I mean how's that knife I mean it's so sharp look out it, it'll cut you just looking at it so yeah that's what you're looking for butt hole just like an apple looks good don't it right there's the butt hole and sometimes it'll even wink at you but don't you get excited it ain't flirting with you it's just part of the nature of things now I know I know the butt hole it's a hard word to remember but let me tell you how you remember it all right now so remember when you did something you shouldn't have done and mom's yelling at you and you're like but mom i didn't mean to and then your mom fires back at you and she's like i told you so you put them together but toe and you got but toe it's the butthole works every time helps me remember you can do the process without having to get in there and get messy and gutting it right so what you do it's called a, I call it a t-shirt cut just like you're wearing a t-shirt probably right now so you do your cut all the way from one end to the other and you come up both all the arms right and you just slice a cut up here same here and same here and then you cut with your, your crazy knife here and you go all the way around and then you start skinning her when you start to skin most people think you're going to sit there and you're going to cut the skin off once that you got that cut it'll start to separate right and when you start to skin it you're going to start to peel the skin back instead of when you skin it cutting it you just turn your knife a little sideways and it'll just kind of peel like a banana craziest thing you ever seen the next thing you know you just work your way around and back on the bottom and it'll be there and next thing you know you got a cape it's like a jacket a fur jacket and it's going to be like all on the ground right there in front of you and you're going to be like by golly that's crazy but before you know it you're pro home so what you're going to do if you're going to leave it in the field you don't even need to gut it you can just leave the bag you'll see there's a way to get these arms and these legs off and then you roll them over on your side and right here is called back strap all right you'll see it if you ever fillet a fish you just sit there and go right along the spine and it'll come up and you start lifting and you feel the rib cage falling down and then from there you just cut you'll feel it on both sides and the whole strap comes out it's crazy it looks like a, a strap 
No wonder they call it the back strap. Comes off its back too. Imagine that. And then you got two ways. You can kind of reach under the small ribs right here, the short ribs they call them, and it's called the tenderloin. That's a lot of people's favorite right there, the tenderloin. And then, like I said, underneath you got the tenderloin. You know why they call it the tenderloin? Because it's tender. And so, but the easier way to get the tenderloin is through gutting. And if you do through the gutting method, when you gut them, that tenderloin is just sitting there talking to you. Hey, I'm tender. Come and get me. And it'll be easy and it's just a snip of a snip. And it comes right off. Like an ain't nothing but a thing. And a lot of people like to cut the head off and take it as a trophy. So you need your saws and all that stuff. And then from there, you've got your whole your whole uh, rump roast right here. They call this the shoulder. I've heard them call it the butt, but I always thought the butt was in the back. And then you get extra meat on the neckline, and you got the rib cage, and you can either saw the spine off you cut it and you get pork chops or you just do the strap everybody wants the straps right so but it's the shoulder there's plenty of good meat here you got sometimes belly like they love like your bacon comes from pork belly and then you got on the neck and you got so much you can do with all the meats that is available for you on a huge giant animal like this like a buck like this you can't go wrong and sometimes if you look right there you just stick it all the way through on both right here in the Achilles and that tendon right there and this bone on the leg bone it'll it'll just like you know you punk a hole in there and what a lot of people like to do when you punch a hole is you get you a, a strap you get a ratchet strap like that right there yeah and then you, you hook them in there, just like so. And once you pierce that hole with that sharp knife of yours, just like my sharp knife, I think it's crazy. You can put these right there and you hook them up in there under its little ankle tender, what are they called? Oh, so then you take this right here in your straps and you just hook them right there behind its killer's heel and you throw the other piece over a tree limb and then you just sit there and you ratchet the whole thing up and the whole body will come up and it makes it easy to work on. Whether it's your uh, pig or a giant buck like mine here, a chicken, I don't care. They all the same. So you're, you're just like I've always said, cutting from here to the, that's right, butthole. Gee. But if you're alone, what you can do, you get you a rope like that, right? You know, brought my trusty rope. You can cut a couple pieces. What people will do is they'll just wrap the legs, tie them up, and then they'll take them out to a tree. And they'll do both legs. So that way, the legs aren't folding up on you, and you can just get it and make it spread eagle. Just like some, some stripper at a strip bar putting her legs in the air for you. And then from there, you just have at it with your knife and you just start making your cuts, right? Makes life easy. So there's so much with an animal that you need to show love. You need to show your gratefulness for its blessings because there's so much you do. You don't just grab the meat and run. You can utilize the hide. You can make a drum with it. You can make boots like moccasins you can make jacket and pants um some kind of cool little hat and all kinds of leather wallets and everything with it you know um from there you can use a bone and antler for jewelry and tools and the bones for tools and then don't you forget that bone broth whoo that sets people on fire they love that bone broth let me tell you that was my papa's favorite other than the nuts he liked them mountain oysters, and he ate the brain too. Crazy, I couldn't do it. 
Um, man, <laughs> you got all the parts. I mean, you can make a water bag with the bladder and uh, I think the stomach, and they're just you learn and utilize the whole animal and, and thank it for its blessings. Because it doesn't bless you not only with food, but other types of uses that are wonderful. It's a lot more than just killing an animal. You're, you're, you're harvesting and you're counting your blessings. Like when we take an animal down, we smudge it, we put our hands on it, we pray for it, and we send it back to the pearly gates. Because it was just there minding its own business and then some asshole came up and stuck an arrow in it, you know, and in and, and its life. So the least you can do is show your respects and send it off with some love. Guys, now, now like I said, there, there is so much that you can do with the animal that you harvest. I mean, look here, look at, look at here, right here, all that, you can get along the bottom of the back strap, or is it the top? I forget. There's tissue, and you can get the tendons, and they call it sinew. You just dry it out, and you, you, you scrape it to where it just turns into string, right? And then you wet her down, and look what happens. You can wrap your arrows with it. You can make bowstring with it. You can make fishing line. I mean, it's infinite, guys, you know. It ain't all about the meat. Make sure that you utilize your animal. Utilize it. Ain't that ain't that a reggae song? Oh um, no, that's that's legalize it. He, he's talking about smoking weed. <laughs> now remember boys and girls everything including a fish, an insect even me and you, and especially that big old monster buck I just took down, is all connected where? From the throat. Yep, you got it. All the way down to the, that's right, the butthole. Man, you guys are smart fellers. But you know what? My pap would be like, they're not smart fellers. They're fart smellers. Phew. I hope y'all enjoyed today. Because I thoroughly enjoyed learning you. Well, I sure did enjoy learning you. You know what? And uh, I'm going to tell the truth. I, I think I'm going to miss all of you. You know? Um, it's just glad in my heart to teach this wonderful way of living to support yourself and to feed yourself and to sustain yourself and to feed your family and your loved ones so um i hope you all enjoyed it and uh i love you i love you all of you from the bottom of my heart to the top Chew. now don't you be worrying about your girl now you'll get her back so yep and remember y'all one thing forever. Keep the country country. Choo! It was parked out in the woods, keys still in the ignition. All the cops were buzzing from somebody's bad decision. Call everyone you know. We found the evidence. Just don't let them see you when you jump across the fence. Somebody stole a beer truck. It don't matter who it was. Grab a can and drink it up. Best keep your mouth shut. Man, we're good to go. Yeah, we hit the mother load. There's more than enough for all of us. Somebody stole a beer truck. Splashing in the creek You can get as rowdy as you damn near want to be We don't build a bonfire We don't need that attention Ain't nobody driving home Not in our condition Somebody stole a beer truck It don't matter who it was Grab a can and drink it up Best keep your mouth shut Man, we're good to go Yeah, we hit the mother load There's more than enough for
Aloha guys, I'm Spice, and here's Lychee, our little star of the show. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys uh, had fun watching and enjoyed watching the show just as much as I did making it and creating it. And so um, I wanted to do this because um, during this time of COVID and all that that's going on, uh, you know, some of us are forced into having to survive and a lot of people hit me up and contact me uh, for hunting and how to do things and so um, I wanted to do this kind of spoof with hopes that people learn from it because in actuality you're not really going to learn until you actually do it yourself and I'm such a nature freak even though you know I hunt and things of that nature when I need to and to sustain myself whether it's fishing, spear fishing or, um, <clears throat> or hunting, I also look at plants the same way. I look at them as live beings and, and part of nature as well. So, but I thought it was important to do this and do it in a fun way um, because I don't have heart to actually have, um, if I were to harvest a deer or a pig or even a bird or whatever, um, to do that on camera because I have so much love and respect for an animal that's giving its life to give me life. So. I wanted to try and have fun with it and hope you got an idea of it as well as um, you know some of you may be vegan or vegetarian and I'm not saying hey you should eat meat but um, I do think having the knowledge of what to do if the time comes and your survival and your existence depends on it on how to prepare an animal uh, to sustain yourself as well as those uh, who are like diehard meat eaters or you know um, you know basic general I think people need to understand and learn farming and growing your own foods and what it takes as well as learning the medicines in your area uh, the natural plant medicines and then um, important as well is survival survival techniques from building shelter to learning how to uh, find water, catch water, or get water in whatever means necessary as well as uh, start a fire um, from what you have in nature. You know, just your basic survival skills. I think it's really important. And so, yeah, there's, there's my love on the table for all of you. And I wish everything uh, wonderful for all of you through this time. And uh, once again, I hope you had fun watching the show and watching Little Lights You Do Her Thing as a little deer. I thought it was great. And so, yeah, big love to everybody. And uh, I will catch you soon. And so, take care, everybody. And lots of love. Um, yeah, I'll catch you very soon. I got some good shows down, coming down the pipe. So, take care. And um, I'll see you. Aloha. <laughs> oh. Yo, we got us a big boat. <laughs> what about that college degree you got up there on your wall in a shiny pipe? Got hold of a crystal. <laughs> Cut. First thing you you're making fun of me, living like in my double wide. <laughs> like a whole basket of cornucopia in the morning. <laughs> I ain't that. <laughs> <laughs> you hook them right up in there. <laughs> Cut. <laughs>